Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Epic Fantasy Romance. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Delicious. Today is Thursday, uh, September 8th. Ah, getting back into my groove from all the traveling. Um... There's a uh, pre-order alert went out today from BookBub for Shadow Wizard, so that's nice. Um, coming up, I am closing in on the ending. Uh, yesterday was a little bit of a disrupted day um, for really no good reason. I might be slowing down a little bit towards the end here, as I am wont to do. So, um... Yeah, I think I've got about, well, let's see. I'm a little shy of 75,000 words and have about 14,000 to go. So, um, theoretically, I could write all of that in a couple of epic writing days. I've done it before. So, and I know how it's going to end, so I don't know why it's going slow at this point. Some of it's just like getting my focus back. I had a lot of other stuff in my head that I need to clear it out and focus. I do want to show you all something really cool. Um, so my series, Chronicles of Desneria, uh, some of you have read it. Some of you have not. I know some of you deliberately chose not to read it because the first book has so much um, awful abuse stuff in it, which totally fair, totally fair. Um, Prisoner of the Crown. So if you haven't read it um, or not familiar, um, Prisoner of the Crown is, uh, it takes place in the Twelve Kingdoms world and it's about um, Harlan's sister who we only hear about in, from Harlan in the books, uh, in the Talon of the Hawk and in uh, Dragons of Summer. And, and there are a few other mentions of her here and there. But she's part of Harlan's backstory. And so Chronicles of Desneria take place, um, I think, 20 years before the events of Talon of the Hawk. And uh, I think that's right. Yeah, that's about right. And when Harlan was only 14 and his sister Jenna was 18 and essentially sold into a royal marriage uh, because in Desneria women have like practically no rights. So I was always very interested in the idea of a woman raised in isolation basically with other women. She knows her brothers because the boys live in the Soraglio, um I don't know if you, how hard you make that G, Soraglio. Uh, the boys live there until they're about five, seven years old, and then they go to live with the men, um, separated from their mothers, so to be hardened off. Uh, so, and then the women don't leave the Saraglio. So Jenna has essentially never met a man until she uh, emerges for her betrothal and wedding, and um, the man she's married to is incredibly abusive, takes out his fury against the emperor against her. So even though she is a princess and incredibly refined, she's, um, she's also molded to be, you know, a decorative plaything. And so, so yes, there is difficult stuff at the beginning of Prisoner of the Crown. Uh, it does have a happy ending because I don't believe in soul crushing. At least just a little soul bruising on the way to eventual happiness. So um, what more did I want to say about Jenna? I don't want to give it away. Anyway, the series, the trilogy, was um, done by Kensington, by their rebel base imprint which they kept telling me was going to be this awesome imprint and ended up being not so awesome. I don't know if they're still doing it or not, but the cover sucked. Uh, if you've been listening to the podcast for a long time, you probably heard me complain about it then. Was it that 
if I was doing the podcast though, good question. Um, anyway, it was, um, they used really cheap clip art on it. And my editor there, um, who replaced the editor who had acquired me to begin with, uh, she, um, <laughs> she tried to convince me it was really expensive art. And, and this is one of the advantages of self publishing. I'm starting to get sun coming in, but I guess it's just in my hair right now. Uh, <laughs> it, when you self publish, you, you have to learn cover art design. And I did not want to, it was actually one reason I did not want to self publish. Uh, my bestie Grace Draven said that she, um, you know, she loves that part. She loves controlling the cover art to the point of like, she approaches people in public and, um, to model <laughs> for her book covers if she thinks they look like our characters. Uh, I am not as comprehensive as grace, but I have learned to love controlling my cover design because the covers that I get <laughs> that I have designed for myself, for my own books are so much better than what publishers are giving me these days. Uh, St. Martin's gave me pretty covers, although I did not love them the way that I had hoped to. But, um, yeah, the rebel base covers were just, um, oh, you should have seen the original versions. The current versions are sucky, but the original versions were like, it looked like a kid. <laughs> And done them in, and they're like, oh, the art department spent all this time. And I was like, I could have done this in five minutes. Yeah, and I don't really know Photoshop all that well. So, um, <laughs> anyway, this is probably all beside the point, but that's very on brand here at First Cup of Coffee, right? Anyway, the trilogy was sold and translated into Czech, and they did the covers that I always, always wanted for these books. Oh, I'm wondering. Hmm. All right. Well, I was getting a little nervous thinking that maybe the sound's not recording, but I'm going to have to hope that it is. I recall this happened before where it wasn't showing me the sound wave. Uh, I have been messing with technology a little bit because I got this a uh, new webcam for meetings that I plug in when I'm inside and on the monitor. I mentioned that. And when I was doing a meeting a couple days ago for CIFWA, they said that they couldn't hear me, that my mic sounded too far away. And I realized I had to change the mic to be the mic and the webcam because I now have the laptop farther away from me. So I was a little worried that maybe it was trying to use that mic and not this one because switching between like discord and zoom, it, the, it messes up. Like the settings are different from one place to another, even from like one discord channel to another. So let's cross our fingers. Cause I'll be really annoyed if I have to re-record this. Uh, of course, if I do, you won't know. No, who are we kidding? You will know because I'll bitch about it. Anyway, the point, and I did have one is that uh, Chronicles of Desnary were translated into Czech and they did these gorgeous, gorgeous covers. And I pinged them on Instagram and asked where I was seeing these covers. And I asked if I could buy a set of the paper copies from them for my library for the, because this is one of those things about trap publishing too, is they do not automatically send you copies of your foreign editions. Um, you, you have to ask. Usually if you ask, they're really nice about it. Uh, but you know, Czech publisher, I was like, yeah, can I buy some copies? Don't know how we do this. And they said, let me check. And then came back and said, um, we would love to send you copies for free. Isn't that sweet of them? So they sent me two copies of each book and I got it like sometime in the, uh, chaos of the last few weeks. So today I get to share. So I'm going to show these to you if you're on video, sorry, if you're not, uh, but look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So this one is, uh, prisoner of the crown. I really don't know. Um, I don't know check at all, but this is her dance that she does at the beginning. Uh, 
I'll hold it up and then I'll try to describe. So the cover is gorgeous. It's all in ivories and whites, which is very consistent with the story. When I told them how much I love these stories, they said, oh, well, you know, and our artist read all three books and really loved them. Uh, and you could tell that the artist actually read the books, which doesn't normally happen. So um, after Jenna emerges from the Seraglio to be betrothed, she does this dance that's a traditional dance uh, where she balances pearls on her palms and then presents them to her fiance bridegroom. And this is something, this is like, you know, what do you do when you're stuck in the Soraglio your, your entire life? You know, I mean, she's taught all sorts of um, things that she needs to know in order to be a pleasing female. Uh, and one of them is dancing. So she's a very strong dancer, which comes in handy for her later. So she's dressed entirely in uh, diamonds and pearls, uh, which matches her coloring because she's very, very pale. She's never seen the sun and she has white blonde hair. And so, so yeah, you could see on this cover, if you are looking that it's really beautifully done. They have, uh, this very, you know, platinum blonde woman, pale skinned, dressed in white, uh, with golden pearls, uh, hovering, uh, by her palms. And then she's sort of framed in a, uh, was well, almost like a mirror or a frame of diamonds and she's dancing and it's just, it's like they pluck the image out of my head. It's so perfect. So there's prisoner of the crown. I'm not even going to try to say it in check because yeah. So then the second book exile of the seas, here's what they did. Um, and so now we might get into spoilery territory. So if you want to know nothing, nothing at all, um, I'll try to be careful about what I say, but, um, the cover gives it away a little bit because this is what happens to her is okay. Spoiler. She does get away and she is on a ship and she disguises herself. And so now this cover, it actually reflects the fact that she disguised herself and she has, um, she's dyed her hair black. It's very short. She cut it short. Actually Harlan cut it for her. Another spoiler, sorry. Uh, and instead of the pearls, now she has daggers because she meets a woman, uh, Kaja, who is Jep's mother. If you've read Talon of the Hawk or Edge of the Blade or any of those books. Uh, and Kaja recognizes her as being this traumatized woman who needs help. And she teaches Jenna, who changes her name to Ivariel to help conceal her identity as she's on the run. Uh, and she teaches her how to transform what she knows of the dance into using the daggers to defend herself. So, so on this cover, she's got the short black hair. She's now wearing kind of a version of fighting leathers. There's a big, um, <laughs> I want to say steering wheel, you know, like the wheel on a sailing ship, uh, with a sense of ocean behind her. There's like the net, like on a sailing ship. So, so cool. And then the third book, <laughs> I, this is just so cool because it shows her transformation. Ooh, and now I've got great stuff on here. So I kept one set inside, which will have to be pristine. And I don't know what I'll do with these. All right. So here's warrior of the world. And now you see that Ivariel is growing out her hair. So she's, um, got the platinum blonde comes part way down and her hair is now shoulder length again. And the, the ends are black because she, she goes back to letting her hair come out because she's found refuge in a place with elephants. And this is really key to the story because elephants are this mythical creature that she had only heard about. Um, because she also was not educated at least in anything besides like pleasing men and the Seraglio and now she's found the elephants and there's an elephant on the cover. Uh, and it's, it's just perfect. And now she's wearing like full kind of chainmail armor and she looks tough and she's got it like even more impressive dagger in her hand and she has become the warrior of the world. So I love what they did. Um, it's phantom print from Czechoslovakia. Um, if you read Czech, which, Obviously I do not. Um, 
you could you could get them and read them <laughs> but um you know when I first had my books translated into French because I I do kind of know French I mean I studied French in high school and college and I read um I read Sartre in French I read Les Jeux Sans Fait oh transcripts gonna hate that um I mean my French is rusty but I could probably get back to it so when my some of my books first came out in French I thought oh well I'll read them it would be really fun to read reader I did not get far <laughs> I thought that I'd be like able to piece it together uh, I'm gonna have to scoot over there duly scooted and put these books in my lap so that they're not on grape stuff the the laden grape vines are dropping grapes and so there's um grape detritus all around uh, this is something that happens every year we end up with like these little empty wrinkly grape skins and I think it's from the birds coming in and sucking out all the juices and then leaving the grape skin behind so um what else do I have to say <laughs> my mind is a blank um so yeah I've just been trying to put business stuff together um doing better on my resolve that I mentioned before conference um Megan Mulry's advice on uh to-do lists trying to keep my to-do lists shorter having an ongoing list in a different place this has been an kind of an intense Sifwa week which is probably fair because I hadn't been doing much Sifwa stuff um, in the past few weeks not much but you know uh, so we had um, meetings meetings on Tuesday I had three meetings in a row on Tuesday and yesterday we had a finance meeting and then today we have a board meeting so I mean I guess at least we're getting it all done right Hello, hummingbird. Oh, hummingbird has come to see me. And yeah, I'm just trying to get like the household stuff caught up and so forth. Um, finishing this book, finishing Shadow Wizard. I do think I'm going to end up going right through to the end. I'm toying with an ending that it's the ending I really want to write, and it would be. I'm not sure what to tell you it would be more of a cliffhanger than I normally write is that terrible it wouldn't really be a cliffhanger but ugh, I can't even talk about it because I can't spoil it for you guys right anyway I'm going to write the ending I want to write and send it to assistant Kareem uh, she wants to read the draft next week she really bless her I mean she's she's just what would I do without her but I asked her if she wanted to read the draft or read it after I did a first revision pass on it and she said she wanted to read both so that way she could see what I change uh, best best assistant ever so I hope you all like this book um, I really love it all sorts of great there's great stuff in it um, some very strong emotional stuff in it and yeah yeah so I feel like I feel like this ending has been telegraphed it's only the ending of the first book in the trilogy so I think you all would trust me to to fix it again I nearly ended and and this would not be the same ending so so don't don't freak but um which book was in Forgotten Empires oh <laughs> Forgotten Empires okay so fiery crown the way I really kind of wanted to end it was with Leah dead and Khan despondent um, enraged going off to um, to, to kill the emperor and 
undoubtedly lose his life in the process because he no longer wanted to live. I really wanted to end the book there. But my editor said, well, Jeffy, this is supposed to be a romance. So, but that was my idea was I was actually going to have the third book reconcile all of that. Um, I think that would have been a great ending, but I could see her point too. I would be interested to know what you all think. Those of you who have read the Forgotten Empires trilogy, um, I think you, I don't know. Let me know what you think. Uh, I think I've mentioned this before a long time. Readers will, or listeners will uh, probably remember that Melinda Snodgrass, uh, when she interviewed me for it, she read the book and she told me that she thought um, that I should have ended on Leah's death and that she even said that she had the uh, image in her mind of how they, uh, cause she's a screenwriter. She thinks in visuals, right. Of, um, you know, the camera lingering on the, the severed hand with the, the orchid ring and ending there, which I could see her point. It would be a very strong ending. So, and I think I didn't tell you all, I got the best fan letter from this random guy. Uh, he tagged me on Twitter and I feel like lately it seems like more and more men have been discovering my books, which is really cool. I don't generally consider men to be my primary audience, but this guy said that he loved Forgotten Empires and he loved the Sorcerer's Moon series um, because he really likes the way I write my, my heroic men. And isn't that cool? All right. So on that note, I need to go write about my heroic man in this book. And uh, actually Jasmine's kind of an anti-hero, isn't he? Certainly reluctant. Unfit? We shall find out. I hope you all have a fabulous Thursday. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you all tomorrow. You all take care. Bye-bye.